think if I stand, if I stand here, it'll be good. I am sick, but this sickness won't stop uh, the constant buzzing in my brain. The the buzzing being two little gay homoerotic men. Um, my name's Alana. Um, <clears throat> I have a script for the first time in my life. Not really. I'm a film student. I write scripts all the time. Um, but today I'll be theorizing the importance of Devil's Minion. An interview with the vampire is season two, produced by AMC. I also have an industrial light pointed straight at me. Not really, it's to to the left. It's pretty bright. It was more bright than I expected. Anyway, we're talking about Devil's Minion today. Um, I'm gonna be going through every single trailer, promo, and teaser for season two on my instagram on my close friend story for the past few months i'd say um i've been posting not posting i've been just talking to the little creatures on my phone my phone about interview with the vampire and specifically devil's minion and armand and daniel malloy and i was like you know what last night i came up with the idea i'm like i'm just gonna make a youtube video I'm just going to make a YouTube video because I know, I know there are other people out there like me. And I need, I need my people to feel represented. <laughs> I need the devil minioners to stand up and rise. For context and um, relevance, I will be focusing on devil's minion uh, throughout the trailer trailers and promos and teasers and whatever um but i'll be like commenting a little bit here and there um about like oh my god like this person looks so good like oh my god these ah like this interaction so nice um just like small little things and i'm sorry if i'm making noise with my mic i'm not used to this this is a 60 cent mic i bought off of timu and probably someone has my credit card information now so um, but another reason why I wanted to make this video is because Daniel Malloy has been my favorite character since the 1994 movie. I was not born in 1994. I just kind of phrase that like I was born so I could like when I when I was born in I know I was born in 2004 actually, 10 years later. Um, but I watched the movie first. And I was like, oh, Danny Malloy, you're so cool. And he's grown to be my favorite sassy man in his older primer years. Um, and you're asking, Alana, like, you've seen, obviously you know about Devil's Minion. You've read the books, right? No. I have only read the Devil's Minion chapter. <laughs> I've only read the Devil's Minion chapter. Um... And I think that's kind of beautiful and poetic in its own way, if I'm going to be a little bit honest. I just think, I think it's special that way. Um, but, like, so I have I have the knowledge of the movie, and I have some knowledge of the books, and I have full knowledge of Queen of the Damned, Chapter, uh, Devil's Minion. So... Also, before we get started, I'm probably going to be picking up things that aren't there like i'm just gonna like pull stuff out of my ass and be like oh my god look and i think that's I, like i'm gonna see it but you're not and i think i just like to play pretend i think i like to imagine what makes me happy and i think that's pretty therapeutic on my end just imagine what's there so if some of this is like alana you sound a little bit crazy probably probably Okay, I have all, like, the videos in front of me, and I have a four-page paper that I'm gonna be reading off of, um, but the first season two trailer that was dropped, um, was dropped eight months ago at Comic-Con, and that's when, like, the interview with the vampire cake started coming back. I was like, ooh, okay, ready to see my boys again, and they're really in like these it's grown a little bit more as like the promos and teasers have come out but in this first like teaser trailer 
um there were there really wasn't um anything like big about devil's minion um but i did pick up a few little things maybe to just like expand upon okay so it starts off with the three of them sitting at the dining table and something that i noticed is that um i don't think this is the first interview like obviously there has to be a first interview post um like armand reveal right but the thing is is that like louis looks a little bit like nervous and scared which i don't think he would be i think he especially after the the reveal when the <laughs> when like louis grabs armand's hand and is like this is the vampire armand the love of my life and he's like and armand's like i think louis would be a little bit more into it and be a little bit more cocky so i don't think that that's like the first initial interview um but uh armand is now officially a part of the interview process so that's fun that's fresh that's funky another thing in that first initial scene some people um if you're active on tumblr and maybe twitter i don't use twitter x at all um i'm a tumblr girly but i saw a few theories and i was like wait that, that kind of has like a little bit of a kick to it we can see a man walking away with like a drink of like a yellow color to it that was by daniel and i like to be a little bit pushy a little bit pushy and i like to think that it uh was honey and pineapple flavored <laughs> Because, like, especially in, like, the first thing, because it, I just, I feel like Armand would be petty like that. I feel like Armand would be petty, and he'd be like, you know what? I'm gonna give you a drink, and this drink is going to have honey and pineapple in it, because that's what, that's what Louis said that my blood tasted like, so now you're gonna taste it, and you're gonna, you're gonna fall in love with me again. <laughs> Probably not, but, <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? I, I, I like to think it's honey and pineapple. <laughs> Like I said, we don't have a lot in this um, specific trailer. Most of it is set um, in Paris. We don't, I, I actually, yeah, I think most of it is set in Paris and the only like, we don't get any 70s or 80s clips. Um, I don't think we've gotten any 80s clips. We've only gotten 70s, um, but that's, yeah, no 70s, nothing of substance to really uh, clutch upon. Besides the drink, that's definitely honey and pineapple. Le <laughs> estate. I can't do a French accent. Okay, and then we end up getting a first look. I really hope this isn't being bad. We end up getting a first look, which has nothing of substance except the little things that I might have picked apart. The first thing I have to say. Hey Armand, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> he is so, he is so unbelievably fine. That's all I gotta say on that. Not really, I'll probably say a little bit more later. You know, it's a beautiful, wonderful first clip between Louis and Armand. And it's like, oh my god, like... I can see the romance blossoming. And then, of course, it's a little stat mention. And then Claudia's tearing up that guy on, like, top of the building. And I'm like, ooh, okay, period queen. Miss Delaney. I love Delaney. At the very, at the very end of the teaser, we have Armand and Louis talking. And Armand mentions thoughts. Thoughts being that Claudia can block out Louis from like reading her thoughts and Armand brings that up and he's like hey like Claudia's really good at this you should get better I could like teach you and stuff and I think that possibly segues into the abuse that Armand has over Louis's thoughts aka also Daniel's thoughts it's 
the thoughts are brought up. Armand brings it up. Louis is having issues with, like, remembering the past. And I think that's really interesting that that's one of, like, the first conversations that they have in the first look. Memory's a monster, guys. Memory's a monster. If there was no me, there was no him. Who would you be? So we have the Who Are You, Louis? Um, little teaser. Promo? Trailer? I don't know. I don't know. All of those words could, like, be, like, the same thing. But I've just decided to use all three indifferent- in- Indifferently? I don't know. But the three are here. We finally see the three of them. Again, once again, in a different setting when they're in the main apartment in Dubai. Whoa! Louis and Armand are all snuggled up close next to each other, and it's like, <laughs> and then little peep the Daniel moment. What happened next? I don't know, Daniel. What what happened next? We'll have to figure it out on May twelfth. That's two days away from my birthday. Interview with the Vampire Season 2 is going to be my birthday present. I was born on the 14th. Also, this is, like, the first trailer that we, like, really get to, like, hear Delaney act as Claudia. And I was, I was a little heartbroken over Bailey leaving. Um, or having, just having, like, another project signed up to do. But I, to be fair, I've been a, I've been a Delaney defender since day one. And especially with, like, the new teasers that we've been getting, it's like, oh, she's so good. And we're going to get to it, but the pair of socks, like, whole thing, I was like, that's when I, like, fully locked in. I was like, this is Claudia. This, this is, this is Claudia. Speaking of the pair of socks clip, this is, this is the next, next clip we're talking about. So, on the AMC, like, YouTube account, they, like, two days ago, with the final, like, extended Jonas cut, they posted the Paris Sucks clip, but people at IGN got their hands on it and distributed it to the people in need. And the Paris Sucks clip is where Devil's Minion really started to kick back in for me. I was like, ooh, oh, this, like, eats. This is so good. The first, like, whole little bit of, you know, of, like, Louis and Claudia talking about, like, their whole, like, what they're doing is, like, so delicious. But we're not here for that, are we? We're here for Devil's Minion. Jump scare. Daniel Malloy. So, cut from the scene. We are at dubai we have daniel interviewing armand and louis who are sitting arm in arm super super cute armand looks absolutely beautiful absolutely stunning um so that's like awesome and when i was watching this clip for the first time when it first came out i instantly clocked that look that daniel gives he's like talking he's like paris sucks and louis like like what the fart what do you mean like that's not what she was saying and he's like talking he's talking to louis but he like looks off to armand for a second and i went i saw that i saw that i saw that you can't i know what you are i know what you are and i was like oh that's so good that's so good and then let me the whole process of like them like bickering back and forth is so beautiful it's so beautiful and like louis is like telling this story and in in my mind in my mind and someone else has to feel the same way i feel like with the relationship that they have 77 years i feel like armand would want to like go like when there's a conversation and habit uh, oh when there's a conversation happening i feel like you look in between the two people that are having the conversation right not for armand he's busy looking away from his boyfriend and giving goo goo eyes to the old man across from him yeah yeah what's going on there armand you're not looking you're not looking at louis you're staring directly into daniel's soul like the little smirk that he does, where he's like, 
<laughs> like <laughs> it's beautiful it's magnetic it's powerful i think i've said it's beautiful like 20 million times at this point uh, what else can i say what else can i say daniel ends up being a girl boss uh being like i'm not gonna let these two little twinks bully me yeah don't let them bully you you're an old man you can stand up for yourself even though both of them are much 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 older than you and much 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 more powerful and not even human but he's like you know what eat my fist Boop. with this whole this parasucks clip brought up the big theory that's been going around all of like the interview with the vampire fandom the vampire chronicles fandom is Alice Armand? I, I've i been flipping with this one back and forth. When the clip first dropped, I was like, oh, 100%. 100% Armand is definitely Alice. I don't think so. I don't think so. There's this one YouTuber that I watch named Autumn Brown, and I've been, like, obsessed with her videos. If you're seeing this, hey, Autumn. I, she brings up a really good point that it would be really, really difficult not only to like constantly or it it would be really really difficult for armand to constantly keep up the illusion that daniel had this wife and children if that were to happen not only would armand have to use that power on daniel but he would also have to use the power on like everybody that daniel interacts with because at this point, if Alice didn't exist, people would be like, Daniel, who are you talking about? Who is this first wife that you're talking about? So I think that illusion would be really, really difficult to, like, hold on to. I do think that Daniel was interacting with both Alice and Armand at the same time. I think that Armand was there. Like, maybe I, I could see, like... Alice and Daniel having this conversation in, like, this, like, cafe or something, uh, this dinner place, and Armand's in, like, a back seat staring at Daniel. Like, I could 100% see that happening. I don't think that Armand is Alice, but maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe he is? Maybe there's, like, a much bigger connection between the two of them that has yet to be revealed? Um, because this isn't the first time that they've brought up Alice, and in the score, it's like, Alice is pregnant or something. Um, there's a song dedicated to Alice, and I think we are going to see this scene with Alice and Daniel. And that brings into the question, is Armand going, going to be there? Is it true that Daniel up and left so he could go work on the book? Or was he scared that she was pregnant? So he left and went to Armand. Skadoosh. Starting off, so I like to do a little run through of like all the all the teasers and stuff. Um, starting off, we have start the tape. I think it was dropped after the IGN thing. Okay. Um, my storage ran out. But I think we're okay now. It might be a little bit of a shift of a position, but whatever. As I was saying, in this first clip, all of them are laughing. All of them are sitting there in the same... All of them are just sitting there laughing. And it's the same positioning as it was in the Paris Sucks clip. Um, but I think it's a different time of day. It might be... I think it's day in this... In the Start the Tapes clip. In the Start the Tape clip. Um, and then it's night in Paris sucks. And I think there's also, I don't remember what trailer it's in. I think there's also a picture of Louis and Armand get progressively farther away from each other in that specific recording. Um, so I think that's really interesting. But all of them are smiling and laughing in this first, in the very first clip. And it's like, like, what are they all giggly about? Romance? Romance is in the air? What's going on there? Also, Daniel, when Louis says, I think it's Louis, this is like, start the tape, Daniel does like a, <laughs> it's so cute. 
Um, there isn't really a lot until the very end of this specific teaser. Um, but there's another clip of Daniel eating food. And what is there next to him? A cup of yellow liquid. A.K.A. Honey and Pineapple. What am I saying? What am I saying? It's from the same clip as earlier. Like, when he gets it taken away. I... I'm going to hold on to the fact that it's honey and pineapple. That's going to go down with me. I, I'm going to die. And on my grave, it's going to be written, it was honey and pineapple. <laughs> but the big thing that we get, I have to sneeze. Maybe I don't. But the big, I have to burp. I had spaghetti just now. And it was hot. And my nose is stuffed. And I'm sick. The big thing that happens at the very end of this teaser is um louie he's like i don't remember i don't remember any of this memory's a monster guys memory's a monster and i think louie says i don't remember any of this and then it cuts to daniel and armand staring into each other's eyeballs what's going on there what's going on what's happening this is, I think, where it truly solidifies that Armand is messing with memories. And not only is it just one person's memories, he's messing up Louis and Daniel's. Louis and Daniel's. Like, two people at once, two birds with one stone type situation. And I think that really, I think I might have said this earlier, it really forwards the control that he has on the situation and it highlights armand is not a good character none of these characters are good characters except i'd like to be a little bit lenient on daniel because he's not a murderous vampire but that's like a pretty low bar we have to hit guys that not only it focus focuses on the fact that louis does not remember anything but then we cut to daniel and armand and it's like what what do these two have to do with Louis not remembering because it's overlapping, like it's overlaid on top of his voice line. And Armand's like, and then Daniel's like, like, what's with the sass going on? But point blank simple, I think this 100% pushes the fact that, maybe not 100%, 99.9% sure, it pushes the fact that Armand is messing up both Daniel and Louis. Telling of the story. Um, making Louis. I think Louis would be an unreliable narrator, point, period, blank, but I think with the addition of Armand, definitely not, <laughs> definitely not a uh, reliable narrator. Um, because we don't know what's real and what's not. We don't know what's being left out. We don't know what's being left out of Daniel's story either. I feel like, I feel like with a lot of what I'm saying, it's, I'm kind of going into, like, overarching idea territory, but maybe I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. The Walking Dead clip? Yeah. I'm the quiet you've been longing for clip. Yeah, first 70s drop. Whoa, shocker. We have Armand and young Daniel staring into each other's eyeballs. It's practically canon. It's right there. It's practically canon. I know Tumblr was freaking out over this. I see you. I hear you. Um, I was with you. I was geeking absolutely geeking i was like oh my god oh my god oh my god they're looking at each other this entire teaser has armand convincing daniel to die so not a win but also to set the stage this is um the night of the bar that they go to they're in the same clothes armand has different hair he just decides he wants to be a luscious vampire and let it down take the mullet off um his eyes are real. But they're both in the same clothes. They're in the same clothes. And I think they're in the same clothes as the Jonas cut as well. Um, so I don't believe this is during Devil's Minion. I believe that this is pre-Devil's Minion. I think the night... I don't... Here's the thing. 
I might have to come out. I, I will come back to it because a lot of what I have to say here also ties into the Jonas cut. But I think that this is a night after the initial interview that Daniel is like, he's probably in his own home at this point in his own apartment. I don't, is it, he's, he's in a different space. I think he's in a different space. I don't remember if they do the interview in Daniel's apartment or Louis's apartment. I, I think it's Louis, but I might be wrong, but I think they're in a different space and Armand goes to him and he's like, Hey, I'm the quiet you've been longing for. Let me kill you. Let me give you that easeful death. And to kind of comment on the easeful death, I, on Tumblr, I saw people talking about how it possibly had, like, a importance in the books. I only read the Devil's Minion chapter. Sorry. So, I don't, I don't know the importance of that line, but it might be important. Um, but from my perspective, Daniel is being offered to be killed. Um, and I think from this point, to continue on from that, I think that Armand has to be interested in Daniel in some capacity. And we're going to get back to this once we get into the Jonas cut. Um, Jones? Is it the Jones cut? I don't think it's Jonas. Have I been saying it wrong this whole time? And from this point on, I'm just going to refer to it as the final trailer. <laughs> Armand has to be interested in Daniel in some capacity for Devil's Minion to start. And I think that Daniel is going to do something dramatic or turn down Armand, which Armand is not going to expect. And that's going to set the pretense of, wait, you're a little bit interesting and now I'm going to stalk you and wake you up in the middle of the night to make you call Paris and use your apartment for my blenders. Also, something that I thought was really funny is that everyone was like, you're the quiet he's been longing for? Girl, what about your blenders? What about your airplanes? <laughs> Another big part of this teaser is that Daniel is getting shit thrown at him. What is going on there? There's like a little avalanche coming from above. I think and I'll be able to back this up. I was thinking this even before the final trailer dropped. Um, in it looks like it looks like the room with the tree in it, right? And it looks like the bookshelves from above. In the context of the whole conversation that um, the Daniel was having with that one guy, which we'll get to later. Um. It could be Louis. I don't think it is. I really think it's Armand that's doing that. Um, because it's coming from above and like Armand has like the power of flight, right? And I don't think Louis would be able to like, I don't know. I don't even know what Louis would do. In the split second that we have before everything comes crashing down, Daniel's like looking down. He seems upset and a little bit like unexpected. So I think it's like in the middle of a fight or an argument and Armand gets sick of it and like knocks everything down on Daniel, which I think is a very on-brand thing for Armand. Homestretch, baby. Um, This is where we get into the final trailer. Shit's going crazy. Hits the fan. World's ending, right? We start off with um <laughs> we start off with a lot of things it's a three like three and a half minute trailer guys this is so much we get to work with we have louis and armand talking and i would assume this is in the 70s where louis like i lost control and armand has like this whole moment he's like just like just get rid of him finish it like interviewing you is his drug let's just end it and i think this is in the 70s because i it could also count for like the like now modern setting but i i really think it's the 70s um directly after the interview um and not only when this is happening when this whole like conversation is happening and we're listening to it we see daniel walking into a room into the room with the tree and Armand's up looking at the books. And there's a figure in the back. I'd like to say this right now. There's a figure in the back. I don't think it's Louis. 
it, in my opinion, it just doesn't look like Looney. I, I think he's like grabbing like dishes or something. I think it's the real Rashid. No, I think it's um, I think it's just a servant. But there are three chairs set up there. Wait, oh my god, wait. Thoughts are coming into my brain. What if like Louis having like a a moment? He's like, I don't want to do this. So they just have like an Armand Daniel interview. Maybe that's when Armand brings up Lestat. Whoa, whoa! And then that's why he gets mad. Well, I think it's the same frame, and, and and Daniel also sits on the same side with like the gray wall behind him. So I think he sits down. Something happens. Armand gets pissy, throws everything down at him because he's a drama queen. And also, we get like the first official like starting the tape. Vampire Louis and the vampire Armand. And then also Armand smiling at him. Hmm. Also, I have to say, the kiss with, like, Louis sitting there and then Armand, like, kisses him on the cheek. It's so cute. It's so cute. And it's so darling. And I love it. I love it. That's all I gotta say on that. As we get through the trailer, we get... Lestat, Lestat, Lestat. Armand's having a freak out over Lestat. And we see in the background, there are, there's a window covered with paper. Louis' apartment, I would presume. Wait, I just realized. I think it is Louis' apartment because there's paper on the window. And he's covering the sun. Brain fart moment? No. Brain spark moment. Armand's freaking out in this apartment, and what I'm trying to discover is, is this post or pre-interview? I think it's during, like, it's around the time that the interview does happen, but does it happen before or after Daniel gets attacked? That's the question. Um, and then, I said I was gonna bring this up uh, later, Daniel's talking with this guy, and I think his name's, like, Kirk something, like, the actor, I believe, um, Daniel's like, I want to get out alive. And this Kirk guy, he's like, you're, you're afraid of Armand. Oh, one second. You're afraid of Armand, but it's Louis that you should be afraid of. But the question is, who is this guy? And I was, I was looking it up because everyone's calling him Kirk. I'm like, who is Kirk? Like, I don't know. Like, that doesn't sound like a vampire chronicle's name. Like, Kirk? But apparently people are thinking he's playing Marius. Which brings up the question. Why is Daniel talking to Marius? And the other question that does not have to do with Marius, how is Daniel outside of the penthouse? Is this in the penthouse? It doesn't look like it's in the penthouse. It looks like Daniel is actively outside of the penthouse. So maybe Armand and Louis gave him like a vacay day? So what's going on there? Now, when this conversation is happening... (laughs) We get a clip. We get two clips. Um, The second clip is the same clip that we got in um, whatever other trailer of when Daniel and uh, Armand are looking at each other. But in the clip beforehand, this is what set me off yesterday. There's a clip of Daniel. He's like listening to something and he like looks up in shock and he looks like he's about to cry. So, guys, what do we think he's listening to? Or, what do we think he's remembering? We, we, don't get, we don't get these big emotional moments. The only other time we got this much of a reaction from Daniel is when he, rem- when he remembered in season one, when he had the dream and he woke up and he found out that Rashid was there in the bar that he met Louis. And Rashid is Armand. So, I think... I think this is a scene where he remembers some sort of relationship between him and Armand. Um, I think maybe he's, I saw a theory that he was maybe listening to a former, um, tape that he'd recorded. Maybe he was, like, talking to Armand or, like, because Armand is, like, he, he's into, like, blenders and airplanes. He's into the electronics, so maybe Armand, maybe Armand, like, played with his tapes a little bit played with his tapes a little bit (laughs) but he played with his tapes and maybe 
it, like that's one of the things or daniel's remembering something because it looks like he's about to cry and i think in the case that they really do stick to the original story of daniel and armand and how they are so codependent on each other i think if daniel were to remember he wouldn't be able to just brush it off like those are years of emotions those are those are years of an intense relationship that he had that sudden that he forgot but now it's coming back to him i think he would be pretty emotional um i don't think that's something out of character i just i love i love that picture and i am very excited to see why why he's looking like that and then we also have like a few other clips of daniel getting attacked and being like thrown against the wall this this is all like yellow lighting which i would like to point out this is all yellow yellow backgrounds yellowish theming moving on <sighs> then we get to the like the you and me me and you you and me me and you you and me i'd like to bring up multiple things in this scenario i think it's beautiful that in every single clip louis is upset besides the clip with daniel and i think it's because they're in the same boat both of them are being manipulated by the same man get this guy out of here but he's like frowning with every other person it's a bad experience with every other person in like this quick scene but him and daniel are smiling at each other and they're like me and you and i think that's beautiful and then we move back to the armand portion so there's claudia armand santiago daniel lestat um in the armand portion of it I find it so interesting. I think they 100% did this on purpose. In every single clip, it's like, like, Louis, Claudia, Santiago, Louis, Louis, Daniel, Lestat, Louis. But with Armand, it's the scene of them drifting apart. Like, it's both of them in both the clips. So I'm thinking, like, what's up with that? Why? Why would they? Why would they do it like that? And then, then this is another portion where I'm kind of like reaching out because I'm, I'm reaching into an area that I don't think is the reasoning behind it. But I'm, I don't know. There's just so much we have to explore. It's the scene of them splitting and maybe they chose it that way because Louis never really had Armand. Um, which brings up the idea of like, Santiago as well. Obviously, Santiago and Louis are going to have a pretty important... But I think they're solely... They're going back and forth because they're, like, enemies. Because isn't Santiago the one that kills Claudia? I think so. He's, like, one of the main reasons behind that. But, um... Maybe Louis just never had Armand. It's like, why would they do it like that? Why would they do it like that? It, it, maybe it's because... Like, we know 100% they're not endgame. Like, Lestat and Louis are 100 percent endgame and maybe they're getting into the idea they were with each other but they never had each other um which furthers the point louis has lestat who does armand have daniel malloy daniel malloy hi uh editing alana i would like to expand on this a little bit more um, when I say that Louis does not have Armand, I mean that Louis has, like, this pretty, like, set, straightforward connection with every other character. Um, like, with Claudia and Lestat, it's like, he's in love with, like, both of them. Like, he's in love with Lestat, he loves Claudia. Um, with Santiago, he has that hatred, um because Santiago is the one that I believe that kills Claudia and like sets her out in the sun. He's one that's like the judge on the trial, you know? Um, and then with Daniel, they have that set companionship because they're in the same boat. Um, both of them have their like memories erased. But with Armand, in the end of season one, he's like, this is Armand, the love of my life. But that title is already Lestat's so who does that who does that make Armand in the story 
of Louis's life. That's the idea that I'm trying to point out. <laughs> Obviously, I'm pushing that. Um, I can't say that I really fully believe what I'm saying, but that's like the only thing that's really sticking to me. Those are the only things that really stick to me. Obviously, there's a reasoning behind that, but I, I just don't know what. I don't know what, and I think that's that's something that I we are going to discover in season two. Um, and then there's a clip where, like, overarching, we can hear Armand saying, I was in love with him. I think this is the interview between Armand and Daniel in that one scene where in the, when they're in the tree room. Um, I think it's, I think it is going to just be the two of them for a hot minute. I think that's when we're going to learn about the relationship between Lestat and Armand because I don't think Armand would want to talk about it with Louis there because that Louis that Louis that ruins the whole thing that he has up with Louis uh, the whole mind-boggling situation and I think he's talking about Lestat but maybe he's talking about Daniel who knows because it is past tense so it's he's not talking about Louis I don't think because he's like I was in love with him so I do think it's about Lestat and, and not Louis and probably not Daniel even though I wish it was and then there's like I don't really have anything to back this up but there or anything to like continue off from this but there's a clip with Armand looking very sad down at the ground and I, I'm guessing it's Louis's apartment and there's like the guy in the chair like rising behind him what's going on there don't look sad Armand you're gonna make me cry and in the next few clips there's a clip of daniel absolutely sobbing like he's like face is red snot nose sobbing what's going on there now remember how i said remember how i said that um in louis's apartment everything was yellow right right in this clip it's green it's a dark green background and i'm like what's going on there so it's either louis's apartment and it's a different time of night and like it's night or it's a different apartment and i think i think it's daniel's apartment and i'm like why am i why am i pointing this out because in the clip where i'm the quiet you've been longing for it's the same color it's the same color it's the green background so when this crying takes place i don't know when but i do know 100 percent that this I'm the quiet you've been longing for, let me kill you conversation is in the same space as the Daniel sobbing his eyes out. I have, I just had to put that out there. And I, I, I don't know, I don't know if it's before or after because in my mind it would make sense because like beforehand in the scene of I'm the quiet you've been longing for. What? What was that? Wait, 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 wait. Never mind, it was The Walking Dead. I would have geeked. I would have absolutely geeked if it, if it was Interview with the Vampire. <laughs> um, I kind of lost my uh, my thought process from that. In the scene where Armand's like, I'm the quiet you've been longing for, Daniel does not look like he's been crying. So maybe that's like a, maybe Armand like threatens him after. Or maybe it could be like a different night. I don't think so. I don't think so though. Um, cause at first I was like, oh my god, what if, like, this is, like, when Armand, like, erases Daniel's memories? That would be so sad. That, I, I actually kind of just, I literally just got goosebumps thinking about it. I, can you see this? Yeah. I just, I, that never happens. I just got goosebumps thinking about that, that could be the scene where, uh, Daniel and Armand break it off. Um, I don't think that's it, though. Like, this could be like beforehand like after the interview he's just alone in his apartment sobbing because that's pretty traumatizing like he's getting thrown around in there like he almost dies um but it could also be he's crying because this other vampire broke into his house and it's like i'm offering you death dude because you're probably not gonna like life anymore <sighs> Yeah. Woo, moving on. 
Also, um, at one point, Daniel's like, memories just keep on bubbling up. Memories about what? About Armand and you pass- passionately kissing in the Night Island? I think so. No, I don't. Um, I think the memories are bubbling up of the interview. But maybe it could be them passionately kissing on the Night Island. Also, the whole... No, I'm going to get back to that. Let me write this down right now so I can get back to it. <laughs> and then and then at the very end Louis's like I want this to remember <laughs> and then it's also like it's him in modern saying that and then it's overlaid like the opacity's down but it's like 70s Louis and it just hurts it hurts and I think they're really they're really going to be bouncing off the memories of monster in between Daniel and Louis. I think this this is last season was very very Louis Louis Louis. I think this season is going to heavily be Louis Daniel Armand. Maybe I'm just throwing shit out there. I don't know. Maybe I'm just hoping for things that won't happen. I don't know. I don't even know if Daniel's going to be a big part of it. I don't even know. But he's my favorite character and I want him to be. <laughs> I'm biased, unfortunately. Recording on my phone. Oh. Um, but what are your thoughts on Interview I'm, with the Vampire? I'm reading an Icebreaker. What are your thoughts on Devil's Minion? What is that? Um, It's beautiful. That's what it is. It's a loving relationship between two very healthy people. Okay, well, this book is about a figure skater and an ice skater, and they have crazy s- Just like Devil's Minion! <laughs> <laughs> so, that's that's the majority of what I have to say for like the trailers right but i'd like to i'd also like to bring up a few things from season one a few season one clips that stick out in my mind that i'm like why why would they put that there if they weren't gonna make devil's minion real okay the first one is that i okay i can kind of get behind this one if devil's minion like doesn't happen armand's pissy he is mad that daniel's there he is upset and i don't know if that's a front he's putting on i don't know if that's um actually how he feels maybe something happened in the past maybe daniel was like erase my memories because there has to be like a whole whole differentiating because obviously daniel can't be there and be an old man if what fully happened in devil's minion happened um but armand is not a fan of daniel I just I th- I think that's interesting. Maybe he's, maybe he's hiding his true feelings. Probably is. Maybe not. I don't know. Um the second thing and I think this like watching this over after figuring out what Devil's Minion was, I was like, "Oh my god." Because it's crazy because you don't even like think about it until you watch it again. Louis is like um I I'd, I'd give it to you now. And Armand like as Rashid looks up absolutely flabbergasted why why would they cut to him because he's literally like like he is shocked it makes sense for him to be shocked because he's like why would louis offer that but it also he he he's like i need to be excused and i think if it were in the sense that he just didn't want daniel to become a vampire because he didn't like daniel if devil's minion wasn't like a thing he'd be like i don't think he'd really say anything or maybe he'd be like that's not a really smart idea i don't know maybe something like snarky like that but the fact that he looks up in complete shock and he's like may i be excused i think it's because louis being petty or maybe he doesn't realize what he's saying. I don't know if Louis has the knowledge of Devil's Minion. I don't know. I I think he might have a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. Because he also, he's like, our boy's gone to sleep when he's when Daniel's getting the medication. And Armand responds right away after that. Um, but maybe he's just being petty. Maybe he's being pissy. Um, maybe he's happy in the fact that he has control and armand doesn't at this specific moment in time and he just wants to be petty about it um but if devil's minion wasn't a thing why 
the hell would Armand respond like that? Like, it just doesn't make any sense, in my opinion. And you know that little freak out I had earlier and I wrote down? Why are they making a Night Island show? What's going on there? Why are they making a Night Island show? Because I might be totally incorrect. Wasn't the Night Island created by Armand and Daniel was there for, like, a majority of the years that they were together? I, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't even think I have to expand on that further. But, like, why, why would there be a Night Island show if it wasn't about <laughs> Daniel and Armand? I don't know. Maybe maybe they're making the Night Island show because Interview with the Vampire is about Lestat and Louis. And they're like, well, I might as well make something about Daniel and Armand. If they did that, if they made an entire show based on Daniel and Armand and Devil's Minion, I would never be the same. I don't think I'd ever recover from that. I think I would be a changed, a changed human being. And it would be the only thing that I would think about ever. I'd probably cry if it was that. Swear to, because like there isn't a cast yet, right? Like there's no cast release. I I bet they're gonna release the cast after season two, and it's going to be young Daniel and Armand. And it's gonna be their story on the night island because they can't really expand on it much in the show because it's about Louis and Lestat. In Armand, but um, a big part of Armand's story is Daniel. <sighs> okay. Hi, uh, this is editing Alana from the day after. Another interesting um, scene that I'd like to point out in season one is when Armand is. I think it's Armand. Someone is showing Daniel, like, Daniel's looking at artwork on the wall, and one of it's Marius. And they're like, yeah, this is Marius, blah, 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 blah. And I think that would be really, it's interesting that they're like, like Daniel's looking at a painting of Marius de Romanus. I think that's how you say his name. Um, when like, he's the one that created Armand. I don't know. It's, and if that Kirk guy is playing Marius, that gives another reasoning and more like foreshadowing of the story. So I just, I thought that was interesting. Another theory that I would like to share, um, created by this wonderful Tumblr user somewhere on the screen, uh, there in the Jones cut as Daniel is talking to this guy who's presumably Marius, maybe, there, um, is a scene of Louis with a cup of blood and he throws this cup of blood at this painting. It's not the painting of Marius, um, and this Kirk guy, he's like, well, it sh it's not, you shouldn't be afraid of Armand, you should be afraid of Louis. Louis throwing the blood at this painting, and what the theory is saying is that this painting, which is a painting of, like, the ship at sea, is from the time period that Daniel and Armand were, like, stealing paintings. They, they like, there's, like, that whole portion where, like, Daniel was, like, an art thief, right? Like, both of them were art thieves. Um, and if that's true, Louis, that, like, forwards the theory that Louis might get, like, really pissed at Daniel. And, like, he's being petty about Daniel because he's petty about Armand. And then that can also add on to the you and me, me, and you, you and me, when it's the clip of Armand and Louis, and they're separating from each other. Because Louis never had Armand! Louis never had Armand! Armand was always, besides the beginning, was really focused on Daniel. But, like, Armand did all these things to, like, prevent Louis from loving him. You know? Like, killing Claudia. Oops. Spoilers. Getting rid of Lestat. My dog's here. Um, the whole Daniel thing. Like, and erasing all of his memories. So, I just, I think that's interesting and I wanted to add it. Well... We've reached the end, guys. The long haul is finally over. I think this is like 50 minutes, an hour of footage that I'm going to have to edit, which I'm kind of excited for a little bit. Um, overall, I think Devil's Minion is beautiful. 
I think it should be canon. I think it. I. I. I think it will happen. Um, but I like to be, because remember when shipping was like, you ship the people that you knew weren't going to be canon, and that was like the fun part of shipping, because you got to like, interact with, like people who also were a little crazy like you. I don't know. I kind of feel like that, right? Like I miss that feeling, and because it's not like happening in the show right now, I'm like, oh my god, what? A- it's not gonna happen. <laughs> and then it gives me like the euphoric feeling of, oh my god, it's actually happening on screen. Um, that's how I was with uh ineff- ineffable bureaucracy and good omens. But that's a whole other thing. We're not gonna we're not gonna dive into that. I think this was a beautiful conversation, and I'm glad I decided to do all of this in a singular day i'm probably gonna finish it and finish editing it by the end of today and you're probably gonna get the video by the end of the day and i hope uh i hope that you enjoyed this because i had so much fun recording it um and i'm sorry if the mic quality was bad like i said this was 60 cents on timu and somebody probably has my card information now they're gonna dox me, unfortunately. Um, but if you liked this, please leave a comment. I love comments. I like to know what people think of me. I like to know how you perceive me. Um, I might make a video uh, going into detail of my theories of season two as a whole. Um, but the majority of what my theories are are Devil's Minion. So. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a a lot of fun, like I had, um, featuring my dad's toy collection. Um, yeah, I hope all of you have a wonderful rest of your morning, noon, or night, and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye!